thank you, Paul, and thank you for inviting us to your wonderful institution here. Um, can I welcome the panellists, scientists, political scientists, uh, that's the media, uh, participating citizens. Uh, I'd like to also begin by acknowledging that we gather today on the traditional lands of the Ghana people and that we acknowledge and respect their relationship with the country. And also today I acknowledge uh, the First Peoples up and down the River Murray including the Naranjeri and First Peoples within uh, the South Australian portion of the river. Their relationship to the river is much deeper than a merely physical one. It's a sacred connection and they have a massive interest in this very important public policy debate. I'm particularly delighted to, to join you here this evening for the start of this discussion because focusing on the science is fundamental to the approach that the South Australian Government has taken in relation to the River Murray. And uh, if I could begin with um, the simple proposition that we've been putting uh, right uh, from the start in relation to this river, and that is that this is a major public policy debate for us. Uh, there's, there's really uh, very few people in South Australia, South Australian life that's not touched by the River Murray. And it's important uh, in embarking on a discussion about the River Murray that we actually do understand the science that underpins the questions that are at stake here. That's why forums of this sort are absolutely essential. If I could begin by summarising uh, the State Government's position in relation to the River Murray, uh, it's a pretty simple one. Uh, we want a healthy river based on science. Uh, that's been our proposition from the start and remains our proposition. Uh, the second proposition is that the burden of adjustment uh, should fall, equi fall equitably. Uh, and uh, those two simple propositions are at the heart of South Australia's position in relation to this matter. And there's a couple of basic facts which um, I think really allow one to understand the, the question and the solution. And, and they are these. First, South Australia takes something like 7% on an average basis out of the water extracted from the river system. 93% is extracted by the upstream states. Uh, and it's worth bearing in mind that the draw for metropolitan Adelaide is 1%. So 93% taken upstream, 7% in South Australia, 1% uh, in Adelaide, 6% for, for our irrigators. Secondly, South Australia capped its take from the river in 1969. So not a, a drop more out of the river since 1969 because we understood the natural constraints of this river. Uh, and uh, since that time, there's been a number of voluntary reductions, but we capped our take uh, and haven't taken a drop more since that time. Over that period, that 40-odd year period uh, up to now, what we've seen is upstream users continue to over-allocate uh, the waters of the river, uh, pulling out a lot more water out of the system, as much as 5,000 gigalitres of extra water a year. So th those facts, I think, speak for themselves. We, we know what the problem is. The, the, water, the river needs more water to be healthy. Uh, we know that uh, South Australia has lived respectfully within uh, the constraints, the natural constraints of this system, and the upstream states have uh, over-allocated the waters of the River Murray, such that it has depleted and polluted the uh, resource, and that's our present situation here in South Australia. But underlying this point is that science uh, should be the basis for all of the decisions. South Australia fought strongly for the creation of uh, an independent authority based on science. That is at the heart of the political compact we entered into when we sought the creation of the Water Act in 2007. Uh, and the Murray-Darling Basin Authority was indeed established in that way by the Water Act. We fought hard for these arrangements because long experience told us that the arrangements under the previous system administered by the Murray-Darling Basin Commissioner was ineffective in protecting the health of the river. The scientists have been telling us for generations that the, the take out of the river system was not sustainable. But the Commission was set up for paralysis. Uh, the Murray-Darling Basin Commission comprised of representatives of each of the states that comprise the Murray-Darling Basin uh, provided a right of veto in any one of those states. So you could make 
change, and it could be positive change, but only by agreement with each of the basin states. So it meant the pace of change was glacial. Uh, and, uh, but, importantly, it also meant you couldn't go backwards. There was a veto. Uh, and so that's an important factor when we bear in mind what's at stake when we consider uh, the new arrangements, which uh, we're presently under consideration. When the present new authority was set up, uh, we ended the entrenched situation of South Australia being stymied whenever the upstream states dug in their hills, because it was now going to be an independent authority that would make this decision, but crucially based on science, not based on political considerations. So the new system, the National Authority and the Basin Plan that we're presently considering has been designed uh, to do its work on the basis of science. That is the statutory mandate within the Water Act. And it's been designed in a way which means that the river gets what it needs first to be healthy, and then the rest of the water is, di is divided up amongst the other consumptive users equitably uh, across the basin. As you know, uh, I've been consistently saying that we need more water to be returned to the river and on the advice we have from the science that we have, 2,750 gigalitres a year proposed in the basin plan is inadequate. I've been saying this on the basis of the science, not just our science, uh, that, uh, but the CSIRO itself, a Commonwealth organisation, the very organisation that uh, the Murray-Darling Basin Authority used to assist it in designing its response, it said that uh, the level of restoration, the 2,800 in fact, but the 2,750 certainly, will not meet all of the authority's own environmental targets. So that's the Commonwealth's own scientist saying that the environmental targets will not be met. Those targets are important for South Australia because a number of them uh, are of national and indeed international significance and they're right here in South Australia. The Chowewa uh, floodplain, and the Lower Lakes and Coorong system, which forms part of a Ramsar-listed wet site. Now, our initial scientific advice, uh, the, the advice that we have from our agency and reviewed by the Goiter Institute here, is that there are other risks as well, uh, and uh, those risks are specifically in cycles of low flow from reduced rainfall, which we know are certain to occur in the future. In particular, there are risks for the long-term stability of the river region economy if the flow rate is not enough to keep salinity under control. So this is a river where, obviously, because we have users of that river, there is an important connection between the health of the river and its productive use. So the quality of the water at this end of the system is vitally important for the capacity of our irrigators to effectively use that water for productive purposes. We've shown the value we place on the science in developing a final plan because we have commissioned an independent review of the scientific work that's been done within our agency and we expect the results of this review by the Goiter Institute quite soon. Of course, it follows from our long-standing respect for science in finding a sustainable regime for the basin and we have a view about where the burden of restoring this should fall. Obviously, we've done our bit. We have pegged our take from the river. South Australia has accepted a lower level of economic growth because in 1969 it chose voluntarily to secure a low take from this river, but one which uh, we've decided not to, to, to extend over the last 40 years. Given that we've shown this constraint in capping our take from the river, we believe that the burden of adjustment should fall elsewhere from those who have taken the water out. It's a pretty simple proposition and one that we believe is unassailable both morally and legally. There's another part of the argument which uh, has drawn some criticism from some quarters, but we say that our attitude on this point, apart from having this moral appeal, uh, is also another aspect of respecting the science. South Australia respected the science in the late 1960s. We say the new basis for managing the basin means that it's time for everyone else to join in. And um, there is much at stake with this new plan. This new plan now hands over the authority that once was resided within the state to an independent statutory authority of the Commonwealth Parliament. Uh, and there is an enormous amount at stake now because the 
the particular way in which this plan works is to make sure that the science is accurate so that the judgment that we make about what the water the river needs to be healthy uh, needs to be precise because the rest of what is left is divided up amongst the other users. Now if we get that wrong, if we happen to be wrong about that or the inadequate science is used, all of the burden of risk falls on the environment. And that's a change in the way in which the river is run. At present there's an allocation for a, uh, a particular allocation to the environment. It receives a particular water allocation and they move up and down depending on how much water there is in the system. This is a new model. That is, the consumptive users will get a guaranteed amount of the river, but based on what the river getting what it needs to be healthy first. So getting the science right could never be more important. Now, um, I look forward uh, to this being uh, an illuminating discussion because I don't think it could be a more important issue for South Australians. Um, one of the ways in which I'm going to assist in this discussion being a robust debate is not to be here. Uh, apparently, um, I've been advised that may assist in, the, uh, in people being much more frank with one another and much more frank about the government. Uh, but I certainly will be here just for the initial stages, but I'm afraid I have another commitment. So I hope you do enjoy today. Uh, understanding the science is central for us getting the best possible outcome for South Australia. So enjoy yourself and I uh, hope your deliberations are fruitful. Thank you. <laughs>